Hi, I'm Masi Masika Mugoro. I'm David Mugoro. And, and together, together we, we are, are the Mugoros. Mugoros. <laughs> and this is our bun in the oven story. So on our, uh, on our first pregnancy, we were like one year into marriage. So we, we, we were just, I remember when I found out I was pregnant, we had just had an argument. I mean, we were really having those, you know, hot arguments on nothing and everything. Because I think when people get married at first, uh, differences are for real. So I go, I do my test, I do another test, you know, and find out I'm pregnant. I don't know if I was excited because I was mad at that time. And, and then, uh, so I come to the sitting room and I tell David, I'm pregnant. He actually became a nice person all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, yeah, how was that for you? I think the, the, the significant part was we had, uh, we had had issues with finances mm. for the whole time. I had lost everything I was doing just before we got married. Mm and I had not found another way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things were strange, a new family, new relationships, different perspectives and opinions of, on everything. And for a long time, I wasn't used to that. So here, uh, I remember, yes, I would have, well, I wanted a child, but I didn't know when, and I didn't dictate when. Mm -hmm. So when- With me, uh, I wanted a child five years. Uh, mm. five years into the marriage I was not so in a hurry I was like I have career goals I have yeah. this I need to do so when she told me she's pregnant I found myself in a confused state because I didn't know uh, why would my question was why would you get pregnant at this time and you know our situation as in I was blaming her for mm. getting pregnant because I felt like she didn't understand where I was or maybe she didn't understand the challenge I was having to to deal with but now that we are here, so I had to man up and come up to the, okay, now what am I expected to do? And uh, I think that is when I say now the recurrence of uh, what I expected my family to be like. I wanted now her happy. I wanted to make sure everything is okay. But at the same time, I don't have the funds. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. And I don't have anyone to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first trimester, was uh, was crazy um i was throwing up the whole time it, it felt like an endless pit that i'd entered into because full time i lost weight you know really lost weight um the, the, the throwing up wasn't fun so the funny thing is i'd be in a sitting room or a, or a place i smelled the kabati <laughs> i threw up immediately so i couldn't go to my bedroom because my bedroom i don't know what was smelling it's the kabati and the blanket so I couldn't use blankets because they were smelling a particular way. As soon as I enter my bedroom, I throw up. You know, then karanga in kitungu. That first trimester, any kitungu I smelled. Then we were living upstairs. Uh, upstairs, mm -hmm. they were walalos who were living there. And then they would do garlic. And then they had um, Perfume. some perfumes that were not, you know, very familiar. And so I don't know. It's like they were doubled. They were heightened. Mm -hmm. The smell was quadrupled so i'd enter home i don't know i just had problem if i knew about masks i'd be wearing masks because at that time there were no masks okay rather they were for for doctors so yeah first trimester i was sleeping in the sitting room on the floor because i couldn't you know be near the window i had to sleep on the mattress with a particular kind of bed sheet yeah that, that, that one was hard for me uh she didn't want to eat anything uh, I think it was because of the, the kitungu. So I would find myself trying to figure Boiled out what food. to make. Uh, she only wanted eggs and uh, the smell. Even today, Mercy has a serious hate and sense of smell. Anything. She'll tell you something is smelling and you can't find it. So this particular time, mm -hmm. we're in a house. From that we had, time, uh, my, my nose was messed. No. Yeah, yeah, we had rented a, a new building, a new apartment. And uh, of course, we were like the first tenant there. So everything was new, the cardboards, the everything, kitchen, everything was kind of new. 
in that particular house of course we had the, the older seats uh, the one we were accustomed to the sofas the red sofas uh, if anybody has them and uh, so the, the kabati was smelling the floor was smelling uh, the air was smelling uh, the the neighbors were smelling for her she was just in a prison everything was smelling <laughs> and uh, that particular time there was this somali lady uh, a wife a couple a couple that was living uh, above us and of course now they are their hanging lines would extend to our our, our house. house. So the the perfume uh, would make my sister kind of go crazy. They were too much. <laughs> so she remember her going to her and telling her, "I want us to be friends, and I can't afford. I I, I can't handle this smell. I don't know how you're going to do. I don't know whether I should tell you when I'm not there. You do this or <laughs> when I, I don't know how to do and." She wasn't a bad person, she was a really friendly person. And she told us uh, she'll try to do to four at night and Anika because the place we were at. And we actually had a, a good relationship. So, but every time she would four, we would have to find a way to get off, mm. get off the house, go out there. It was hell. Uh, and um, another thing, hmm. Mercy didn't want anyone. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> she did not want to see anyone. What? <laughs> no. Yes, I remember her sister coming to visit her. Oh yeah, yes, they used to irritate me. I don't know why. She would just get. She nothing was making her happy. I think the whole situation. Well, you know, it's like I was sick. You know, <laughs> like depression. Because I'm throwing up. Nothing is interesting. Nothing smells good. Uh -huh. I didn't. I remember her. We went for the clinic, and we were told how we needed to have walks around, and we had a good place that we could walk. But she would come and tell me, "I have, I have to take her." It wasn't a request. I have to take her for the walk. <laughs> and the moment we start to plan to walk, something doesn't work. She does not want to see the people that we are going to see. She does not want to walk <laughs> that particular <laughs> <laughs> as in, as they, she would go like, no, there is wind, the smells are just too much. So she, we would have to wait until a bit later. Then that time, she doesn't want to walk again. Mm. And we actually never walked. I think we walked, walked twice or, or once. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I still remember being mad at you because you didn't take me to walk. So I yeah, don't know what I wanted. <laughs> everything was not good. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. again, the only thing she wanted to eat was eggs. And then every every friend that we had, family, would come tell us you can't eat so much, so many eggs. If you're pregnant, you will see you the baby. I used to eat like big. four eggs a day. Uh, we had um, <laughs> yeah. We had every advisor telling us not to eat. Of course, it doesn't work. People people have different things. That is not the truth. But the confusion of you have never been here. Uh, you don't know. You can't you can't even ask anyone. But the advice keeps flying. How to do? Where to be? What to eat? Uh, how to uh, uh -huh. the only part is i ended up having to watch a lot of tv because we were sleeping at the on the, on the sitting room and uh, it had to be a particular time and i couldn't sleep on that side uh, near uh, anything uh, that uh, is uh, smelling uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, second trimester was easy for me. Uh, at least now I started to eat. Uh, food was tasty. I was eating everything. It's just that my mouth was tasting like chuma. I don't know what that was. The whole time, you know, now I understood why people spit. I'd feel like spitting, but I couldn't. <laughs> it didn't even make sense. So I kept eating salt, salt. So second trimester, easy. Easy, easy. I'd go. I was even looking pretty. I was happy. I shot a video. I was happy. Um, yeah, do you remember anything second trimester? Yeah, let me use this opportunity to say thanks to Jay Blessing. He he actually came finding us. We were we didn't have any money that we would go looking for. So there's a song he liked, a very old song he like, used to like, and he came asking us if we can do a video because at that time that we had the song, we didn't have uh, we didn't need a video. 
So he came, we shot Nisamehe mm. in that particular place. It was a new Look at place. The it was a new place, so we ended up having a blessing kind of sponsor. Mm. The whole thing. We remember we could add uh, mm. Ugali and Skuma. Yeah. Uh, they at home and the opportunity to shoot video kwa Miembe. Yeah, was good. Yeah, was second fun. trimester was good. Third trimester. Mm. Ooh, I was tired the whole time. I still remember. Uh, then what happened with uh, preeclampsia? Mm. So my blood pressure shot up um, um, from the the seventh eighth month. My blood pressure went up. What what else? It's my, my I started to swell. I became totally black. I didn't know because I kind of used to not go to clinic as such as I didn't like clinic. <laughs> I didn't like the, the smell <laughs> of, of, of clinic. So uh, at some point I realized, let me just go and check. So I go to hospital, they're like, your blood pressure is very up. Uh, you, you, this swelling is not normal. I thought it was actually, mm. you know, so I, I went, I thought it was normal. So I went and then, yeah, so from then I started taking medicine. Mm and it was hard to breathe sometimes. So yeah, mm -hmm. the trimester was scary for me at some point, um, yeah. Yeah, but, but for me it was really scary because I couldn't see, Masi had no comfort anywhere. Nothing was fun. Uh, sitting down, she would have, she would be so tired. She can't walk. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a car. <laughs> uh, we, had, we had been given a, a car. Uh, we have been blessed with a car, uh, but it had a lot of issues. So because it had uh, smells, it had uh, issues, it could <laughs> stop anywhere, <laughs> she could not go with it. And uh, she even sitting down at home, she would get tired. And then because of the, you know, the swelling, whatever side we would apply pressure, it would remain like that. It was, I was seeing a young person who was really struggling and I didn't understand it. I didn't like this. I said before, we didn't have people who would didn't advise us like how this goes. Uh, everybody expected us in our circle, expected us to know, which is a really risky place. But I think it's again us, not mm. visit me again, you know, the whole smell issue, not wanting to go to clinic. Because mm. if I went to clinic as such, the first pregnancy I didn't go, the second one I was there full time mm. after seeing, like, you can actually die mm. from a pregnancy because I think the second time after now um, we stayed, I went to clinic again. They're like, no way, you have to deliver this baby mm. before time. Yeah. So the baby came like, you know, three weeks before. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the biggest challenge was now dealing with the whole swelling, the whole the pressure thing mm -hmm. coming up over and over. And then Mercy really tried to mature up. She wanted to now not be such a burden. But then uh, me, now where I was, I, I had um, had a perfect view of what she was going through. And it was really scary. Mm -hmm. I remember having me, me when I'm in my prayer and I would ask God, do I want a child and lose a wife? Or do I want a wife without a child? And I would, I would always go to, I would rather have my wife, uh, the child you can give me another time. If we are not mature enough, you can, okay, we can, you can extend it, but we cannot, I cannot lose my wife. Mm. It was a scary place where I was thinking now, how, what if she died? What if she died? Yeah. What would be better? Me, I have a child without the wife or, <laughs> it was a scary place. Mm. I, yeah. Yeah. So we went, I went to clinic as usual. And they told me I can't go home on the third, I think mm. it was the 35th week or something. So I had to, what's the word, the, the one they induce, mm. induce. So I was in labor and I, I, was, I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared because I always imagined wow, giving birth is like dying. But I didn't mm. die. I was in labor like for um, the whole night mm. um, until the next morning. It started at 6. Kidogo, kidogo, but it wasn't. I didn't feel the pain people feel like in the movies. Like I was waiting for pain, like the one in the movies. The one ah! they didn't have that. I was just having small, small ones. And then by the time it was ten, I was just tired of you know feeling uncomfortable because I was I was throwing up. I had diarrhea, you know, all sorts of things. And then yeah, it was easy for me. I didn't even know how I gave birth. You know, those I was expecting those scary things in the movie. They didn't happen. So yeah, I come out 
uh, my baby comes out at 10 and by evening my body is like shrinking you know like how when you wring a, cl a cloth mm -hmm. It, it took us like in Mekunjwa. So my whole body was like that immediately. And it, it was so weird, like water has come out of my body. So um, though my blood pressure was still up for a while, but it was safe on the on the first baby. Yeah, well, all this time when we were pregnant from the first, they think that what, what really kept Mercy on was what her auntie had told her about pregnancy. The fear of giving birth, the fear of... Uh, this whole process. Mm -hmm. It was really scary. I think the auntie may have meant well to just scare them from premarital sex, but <laughs> it really worked against Mercy really yes. bad because she really oh. ended up really scared about giving birth. And, and that's the reason why I didn't even want to have children. Because mm. it's like, what? What akura rua? Ay, yeah, yeah. You know, the, all those scary mm. things as a kid in your head, you're thinking, ooh, mm. giving birth is such drama. So, so yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't mm. bad. Then we got we got a really beautiful child. We were so in love with with, with Ranis, our first born. Uh, I remember when we were looking for the name just before uh, before she got all tired, and uh, we didn't know what to expect. So we it never hit us uh, what we would want to have as a child. As in, what is this, uh, like what the complexion? What's what would be the personality of that? Me, child? I prayed. I prayed. I was like, God, me, <laughs> Mister Kim. Nataka mtoto wangu akuo mweupe. Mweupe. Eh mweupe. So I would pray for you know asikuwa na sumbua usiku mm. which she didn't. Yeah. Yeah and 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 she didn't cry. She was not as in a, a, like a, a like a very disturbing child. No, she was really calm. Yeah. To the extent we were wondering whether that's okay, that's yeah, normal. That's normal. Uh she would wake up, just be at uh, on the bed, do nothing, just not cry. Mm -hmm. Then she would eat well that that uh, for, for the first time. And it was fun. Well, it was now how an exact the examine of having a child. Mm -hmm. Uh just before that, I was really mad with Mercy for not allowing me to go to the theater i really wanted to be there but she refused i told the nurses to tell me she told them to not there you see when david would come <laughs> i'd become very weak you know like like oh everything is aching so i felt like i'm stronger without him then of course i don't know why i'd just be so mad at you uh for no reason so i was like uh, please i don't even attend on i just want to be alone. Can mm. I just be alone? Like you're saying, I really was uh, not so much into having people around me when I'm going through tough times. So yeah, yeah. and and maybe I should say, take this time and say, Fat Fatima, choose uh, any maternity home in Rongai. Yeah, really give us a good service. They give. Uh, it was really comfortable the yeah. whole time. It was scary. There are two things uh, that I really would want to some any couple to know. We didn't have money. We didn't have hope where we would get. We had even gotten to a place where we didn't know if Mercy would ever sing again, if I would ever do my business again. We were in a confused state. Mm. Uh, they did not harass us in the whole the whole process. They took, they gave us the best med medications uh, for very um, affordable prices. Yeah. They were able to give us counseling consistently the whole time, me and her, independently and together. Nice, without having make, making it look like it's a, it's a counseling session, mm -hmm. uh, even after the child, even the blood pressure thing, the, the what do you call this, a preeclampsia, yep. mm -hmm. the whole thing, it was easy to work with the nurses there, uh, and also the prices were really good, mm -hmm. and we, it wasn't very scary having to look at the figure and what we needed to do and go through the hole and have a child. Yeah, uh, yeah, that they really did well for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. the, the sisters were amazing. So after I've had my first baby, I'm saying, me, I'm not going to get pregnant again. I'm done. <laughs> what? <laughs> Six months later, 
I'm pregnant again. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? <laughs> you know, I was so mad at myself. <laughs> I was thinking, I was not ready. I had plans and none of them, you know, it's now another pregnancy and it was hard for me. And so, uh, second baby, I, I think I don't remember much. It was not as bad as the first one. At least this one we slept in the bedroom. This one was easy. Mm. But the pre-eclampsia pre got worse. Mm. Yeah, the, it got worse to a point where now everything was even a problem. They told me now it's easy to get, you can get blind. Uh, your kidneys can start, can fail. Mm. Same thing as swollen, blood pressure. And so uh, that was the last baby I had. Mm. And uh, that experience had to be a CS quickly mm. before pressure goes up because they were maintaining it with medicine. And yeah, but but I feel now I'm I'm, I'm happy I had both kids at the same time because they're like twins. I, by 26, you know, and so my kids have grown together and that that was a good thing that happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, the second one, uh, Masi may not know, she, at least we were easy. We knew what to do. We knew who to ask for advice. We knew the nurses at, at, uh, at Fatima. Uh, so it wasn't as hard, but the hard part was now me dealing with Masi. She did not want uh, food. She did not want food. She, she had no appetite at Which all. Which one? The second one? Yes. She didn't have appetite? She had no appetite at all apart from eggs again. Ah. And, and popo. And pineapple. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I would have to go find out where to get pineapples. I would have to get... But, but smell wasn't an issue that no, time. No, this time it was... You didn't have much issue. Actually, the only issue was food. Mm. Uh, the only thing she actually survived on was jahe. She ate a Which lot of that. Which if you karangad. So, oh, I remember you brought for me chips in the hospital. Yes. And I don't know how. Oh my God, I was so rude. No. Una is that you your chips? Bila chumfi? Una is that you let your chips in me I was so angry. I couldn't believe. believe. Mm. I don't know. It's because I was lab. I was going into labor, and I think I was stressed that mm. I'm going into labor. That's the second. No, page. it didn't start there. That's the second baby. Yeah, second baby, Tevita. Mm. You had, uh, you wanted particular things particular way. Yes. Like in Jahe, there was a way you wanted them. Yeah. And I was the only one who could do that. I remember mm. our girl at that time, she was Janet. I don't know where she went uh, after that. Uh, Janet would really was a good cook mm. and young and very friendly. Yeah. But she would not make food that you would eat. She had no appetite for any. The only appetite she would actually get was for jahe, and you know you cannot eat jahe every other time. So she, we, I would have to make it myself. I, I, I eat. She'll eat very well. Then, uh, uh, then any the fruits, the the pineapple, the the, the popo, mm -hmm. which I really dislike. But she would go for it anyway. As if she didn't care where you're going to get it, just mm -hmm. get it here. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our situation financially has not changed. Uh, we have not found a, a different way of making money. We are surviving on uh, like the, the I don't know how much. We didn't even have a budget. Actually, we had not paid the house like from the yeah, fifth month for, for the for, from the first <laughs> from the first pregnancy. We have not paid rent, but we had a good a couple who had given now rented us a house, and they were they could see. And I remember telling them, uh, I'll sell this car. Remember the car that we could not use that had enough mechanical issues? Uh, I sold that car uh, for a very crazy price. Yeah. Because we needed to survive, pay a few debts here and there for us to survive. Uh, there was no income as it is. Uh, so we were stressed. We were stressed. We had, uh, we had brought in our friends. Do you remember the plot we were in was a new one. So we had mm -hmm. told our friends, Survival is good. At least you find a way how you can survive. So we had called our friends around that we can be able to rely on. And uh, for, to some extent, I remember one of our friends actually supported us on on uh, meals. We didn't have food. So we would go to her house, which was down there, and we would have food. She didn't have a problem. She was also very busy. She would go to this crusades of a crusades uh, meeting of meeting so she had some some food and we not much by around a month we actually survived on her on remember my wife does not have any appetite for anything so even what we are eating there is not much my issue was 
uh, her survival because now she's pregnant she need more her emotions were really high <laughs> i remember us going to clinic and we are coming back home it wasn't very far in fact we were actually paying 10 shillings from the clinic to where we were living it was 20. yeah that part mm. and uh, we are sitting in a mat and she sees someone who looks like the father and she starts crying i have no idea how to tell Even her me i don't know why i was crying <laughs> <laughs> and I, I cried guys i cried like for like one hour <laughs> non-stop yeah we talk a lot she's walking crying uh, at the portion we're supposed to walk uh, we enter to the place we are living she's crying and according to me everybody sees like i'm abusing my wife she's pregnant <laughs> she's pregnant she's uh, she looks this person and uh, we, she was she was very thin and uh, that's the first one yeah, uh, even the second one. Mm. Mm. Yes. And that she is this pregnant and now she's crying and we are walking. Uh, I, I knew everybody along my path. So the Sawabucha, I don't want them to see my wife crying. So I am not sure how to hide her. And I can't tell you. And why she I'm cannot crying. she cannot even explain why. And I couldn't crying. stop. So I'm wondering whether it is pain. She does not want to talk to me. I am her <laughs> first enemy. So <laughs> Uh, so we go home, then she start now trying to explain what she felt and where I got into is uh, very close to depression because I felt I'm failing her. Yeah. She misses her father because the, the, why, the trigger for, the, for her crying was the, the, that guy that, that looked like her father. Yeah. And I felt like I'm now losing my wife because I have not been able to be responsible enough to sustain what we have. And she does not know, but it really took me a long time to get over that. Uh, how do I match up with her father? Her father is a bishop, successful. He's, um, for lack of a better word, very successful, very rich for me to compare myself to. And here we are, we don't even have basic food. We, any knock is either to a steamer and attack a any knock is uh, the, the rent guy. Yeah. <laughs> Now you may pick a 42, sasa. Or someone, or someone who I don't want to come to the house. A neighbor who I don't want to come see. Yeah, yeah. That time you don't want visitors. I don't want anybody seeing our seat. I don't want anybody seeing how we are living. Yes, the house is good. But what is inside there is not anything I want anyone to see. So, as in, I started now disqualifying myself mm. as a husband mm. to her. And thankfully, uh, we had to get out of that house after, after some time. That was later. With the with the the child came, Tavita came. Yeah, when it was like three months or something. Yeah, three months too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. We get, can, we left with Tavita. Yeah. Ah, uh, no. I'm sorry, Dabu. He came. He came. We, 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 you give birth to Tavita. How old? Who, Which who? week? Mm. To Limza. Ah, uh -huh, thirty something. Thirty. Was it still twenty seven? No, no, no. It was like two months before. Yeah. Mm. So he was really. It was one kg, Not one, even one. One, one kg seven. We were yeah. so traumatized. Uh, Is it one? Yeah. Nine hundred. No, it was. It was one point <laughs> seven. Okay. Was it? Yeah, it wouldn't be nine hundred. This is when 1. I really, 7, yeah. when when was getting go, going to give birth to Tevita, I actually did see her dying. As in, I thought she would not come out. The the preeclampsia had gone ten times higher. He knows how to explain better. Uh, he had. Uh, she had. <laughs> She had all the pains. I think her labor went almost like, almost two days. I felt like it was no, a week. No, Fortevita was CS. Yes. Eh, but you still waited. There was waited. labor, yeah. Yeah, yeah there was waited. labor. We waited for a long time. Yeah. I remember getting tired staying in the hospital and I was not in pain. So I was wondering what she was going through. I would go to like, try to find out what she's going and she would not want to see me. It was really bad. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> It was bad for her, and I, I started now seeing. I actually remember praying, telling God, I cannot lose my wife. Mm. If, if, if the child you want, sour. But thank God for praying, people. Yeah. People just started praying, praying, praying. By yeah. the way, I think that mm. one was prayer, cause, cause they said that this one is for going. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. Her, she was. Her size, like now, I think like three times. She, I'm going to My sisters like, couldn't like, recognize me. She was a different person, and then. Uh, there was no explanation of how we can get out of it. We are in a place where we can either induce the labor for the child to come, Mapema. But my pressure has to go down. The pressure has to go down. So the pressure is not going down, and I feel like she's dying. 
so I called her father, uh, the, the mother started calling people to pray. There was a pastor who was in the same hospital. Uh, then we were told that I shared the, the story. They started calling people to pray. We really felt, especially everybody who knew Mercy, like this was a really bad place for her. She was actually dying. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. Yes, a lot. We, we got everybody to pray. We got everybody to pray. As in, <laughs> as in it was bad. <laughs> I'm joking. It was very bad because now Mercy wants to show this strong face, but we all see she's struggling, but you can't tell her. But sometimes you don't know. You you you're just you know yeah you you're just pushing. The biggest miracle mm -hmm. the, in the second miracle was we didn't have money, so we are we have we have we have we now got a, a child. Our our child by God's grace was able to survive. Uh, he was strong enough even though he came up earlier uh, the same day I remember again I was I was never allowed to go to the theater which I wanted uh, then well, it was a I was called I was called to to see the child after she, she was now with that medication the whole pressure so mm. she, she took some time of um, being awake so I went to see the child and I couldn't believe he was so small, scary small. <laughs> but on the same time, there was another child who was who who also was, had came together with another parent, and uh, he was four kg, and he could not breathe. The, the four kg child did not was not breathe, able to breathe, and he actually did not survive the night. My Katavita was so small, and all he needed was he, the warmth. He was never put into the incubator. He was just put in a warm place and mm -hmm. that encouraged me fast. I mm -hmm. got the strength to now look because now I had issues. I wanted, I was figuring out how to pay the, the maternity, uh, the whole procedure, the medication. Mm -hmm. Marcia is sick, she needs medication, she needs, uh, and um, I really wanted to be the man, but I didn't have any way to make money. So. The first miracle was Tabitha survived the first night. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcy, well, on the second day, now she's tired now, getting again back to normal. The, the, the swelling started going down, mm -hmm. the pressure started going down. Like The pressure actually went very fast, completely down to normal. Uh, before we left, I think the best thing I should say is uh, our bill was paid by the cook of the hospital. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have money for 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 the cs yes yeah yeah so, so the the cook as she was coming to find out what Marcy would eat found her in that composition where she doesn't also know what to do and asked her whether she had a problem i wasn't there mm -hmm. so when i came uh Marcy tells me the cook asked if we if she can help us with uh, with this bill and yeah. of course we didn't have a choice and uh, so i called our friends uh, and family to help me raise the money to pay the cook now because we have found someone who can pay immediately mm. but I will need to pay that money. That was a miracle because yeah. uh, she was um, she was very friendly, she was nice, they, she would, they were making very good food as well, especially for that time but we did not expect yeah. her mm. to come to our rescue. Yeah. She didn't know us, she did not even know who Marcy was mm. at all. Mm. And when you look at people, sometimes there are people who look like they don't even have money. Yeah, it was just so so. She's she was she was a, a young yeah a young woman mm. that who you would want at all like she would want anything. She just came to help. Yeah. In other words, if you, even if you were not able to pay her, she would not have harassed us. That was another miracle with mm. with David. And uh, I think from there it has been one after the other. We were able to stand get back on our feet later and it's now 10 years for Tevita. Yeah, mm -hmm. they turned 11 and 10 mm -hmm. and we, we are grateful. Mm -hmm. Cravings. Um, what did I crave? You, uh, you, you. I remember you sent me chips. 
Eh, he wanted to uh, but yeah, he used to like chips and then chips. Nasio chips zote. Chips mwitu zilikuwa tamu. <laughs> this is a barabara. I don't know why. And then there are these two fishes. Yeah. The fishes zam but there zile two za barabara. Mm. And uh, yeah, there's, a, there's someone who used to, I, no, I remember that. There's someone who used to do those two small fishes. I don't even know where they went. Where where mm. where we live, I don't see them anymore. Mm. And uh, yeah, and and eggs. Mawe. Mm, yeah. Mchanga. Mchanga. Smell ya mawe. Eh, kwanza hiyo smell ya mchanga. Ya mvo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else? Nothing much. Just yeah, that. Yeah, the, the, the chips you wanted. I remember when I went to go buy the chips you wanted. Yes. But then then one day he brought chips yenye ime ime ngua. Hapana, you don't understand. Hapana. Where well, you don't understand. Let me Ulienda tell you. Ulienda kuleta chips ime ngua. Where well, unataka chips? Uh-uh. Mi nimeenda kutafuta chips. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Zile nimepata. Mm. Ni hizo mwitu. But wakati unaziona, you don't want mwitu anymore. Hapana zilikuwa zimeungua. Mm-hmm. Zilikuwa zimeungua kabisa. Alafu ziko na hiyo taste ya mafuta imeungua. So I'm thinking how can you be so in- Do you know even cried? <laughs> I'm like kuna za chini let ya chips mbaya hivi na unajua nini si konancha. Let me give you this. And then it, you, where we were you the you, uh, Now those chips mm. I bought somewhere along the line between Fatma and where we were living. Mm. So I didn't have money for the matatu. So yes. I had to walk. Yes. Yeah. So this is when you are in hospital. Mm. So I walk and when I find the chips, eh, I forget to put salt. Yeah. This this <clears throat> chips is when I'm I'm in the hospital getting ready to deliver. Yes, so I bring and you taste and you everything from that point went from bad to us. They don't have salt. Zimeungua. Sijui ma hii ni mafuta ya gani. Kwani umenunua kwa nani? Uh, but you know that time I wasn't I didn't know I am that uh, an emotion, emotionally unstable. <laughs> In fact I was wondering what is wrong with this man. Where, where does he, so he's like you're so ungrateful. Mm. I am ungrateful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it just went from bad to worse and so mm-hmm. somehow they even that's why hata siko nataka kumuona kwa theater. Kwa nini akuje? I don't know just mad at everything. Yeah. yeah. But also I think you like njahe sana. Mm. Like that's the only thing you would you yeah. would eat. Uh, yeah. No kikaranga na dania. There's a way you are carrying it. But when you are not in the house. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Anything else now? I don't think so. I can't remember any other cravings. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a time I actually learned I wanted to do more. Uh I had wanted I I wanted to I love cooking. But my cooking was not what Masi would like. I, I used to think my cooking was just like a kuyu cooking because I learned it from mom. Mashakura. Mashakura. Uh, mix everything, just make sure they stand out. Ubaki uh, nakatis, that was my goal. Ubaki nakatis, toki malis chakura. And uh, for Jahe, I managed to get her hooked. Uh, for any other thing, it wasn't working. I have to try the rice she doesn't want. Mm. I'll try meat. the gibberish she does not. Mm-mm. I tried any kind of uh, ni- I would I would cook. But I, would, I agree I was ungrateful. I would I would <laughs> go to my butcher guy. Mm. I would kopa my kakota. I come sincerely wanting to make something beautiful. Mm. Then I would cook she would onja like that and return it. And she doesn't want it. Mm. But but Look at us, we are still here. And everybody else would taste it, would go like, wow, how did you do this? But not her. Yeah, but, but now I appreciate your cooking. <laughs> it was the pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, mm. okay. Mm. Then also, uh, I think the, the, <laughs> the, the encouragement I got more was, uh, if, if I wanted Mercy to concentrate, I would have to bring now our daughter who was a little bit bigger. She would adore the girl. Uh, if I wanted her to listen, I'd have to bring Ranis around uh, there. Then she would listen. So she like wanted to have Ranis more than than Tevita, the younger one. The, now Tevita didn't care, <laughs> uh, of course. At that time, then Tevita, even when he was young, he didn't have any attachment. Nothing. Everything is okay. Okay, whatever. Because he was very small when he came. Uh, and also Marcy did not have, because of the pressure and the medication, it affected her, her milk. So we had issues with breastfeeding at yeah, that time. Yeah, breastfeeding. So my, her mother 
told us uh, you you don't kill yourself the child will survive whether you do the the nini or you try feeding mm. so she taught us how to to feed the child very early actually very 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 early mm. and we started with uh, popo juice and glucose uh, i don't know uh, I don't know whether that affected Tevita. If you mention Popo to Tevita today, <laughs> eh, you will be enemies. Yeah. He does not want to see yeah. or even smell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but now they are good. Uh, also, he also developed a liking. He loves juices to this day. Anything juicy, he will make. He's, he's a good cook, so he'll make everything juicy. He'll yeah. try make any kind of juice. He'll concord. He will do everything to have a juice of some. Yeah, yeah I yeah. can't remember anything else. Mm -hmm. I think our advice to young couples or people who, you know, are pregnant is, for me, I think it's very important for you to visit the clinic. I used to, you know, because I had never been to hospital as such. I've never been sick. So hospital was not a place I like. I just, the smell of, I think, jik or what they cleaned, and it was just not good. I didn't like it. So I didn't go for clinic. So just to find out later on that I have complications that would have killed me. Uh, uh, and and had, had I gone earlier, I'd have, you know, uh, been able to take care of, of, of myself, mm -hmm. maybe better. And so it's important because every pregnancy is different. Mm -hmm. You don't know what your problem could be or, you know, it, it's important to have people check you out. It's uncomfortable sometimes to be checked, uh, but um, it's worth it. It's, it's worth your life and the life of your baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there, there are no formulas uh, for every couple. There's no, no particular uh, path that you must follow for you to be successful in marriage even on business mm -hmm. everyone is unique every your story your situation is unique uh, even even the whole the whole process of pregnancy is unique to you and the best thing I would say is what I have learned is just go go through it your own way mm -hmm. don't 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 compare yourself to others don't uh, beat yourself up i didn't have money so i thought because i didn't have money that's why i was having problems it's not even if i had millions at that time i would still have a situation with uh with Marcy's body uh i wouldn't money could not change that but again it's good to learn way ahead of your time what you need to do we had a site we would visit uh, baby center baby center at that time it was only dot uk mm -hmm. and they had clear instructions of what to do, what to expect, how you are feeling, what you... But it wasn't enough because the situation in the UK and the one here mm. is a bit different because we are also unique. Yeah. So you need someone in your locality who yeah. can advise you, yeah. help you go through the whole process. Mm. Uh, and for the men, situations change. Being with money or not doesn't really dictate how your child should be. Uh, relationships are key. Uh, grow them learn from each other don't mm -hmm. compare yourself learn from your friends your parents people who have gone ask questions it's good to know some things are so common but they look like they are only unique to you because you don't know ask around you will you will be surprised at the solution around you yeah you can find serious solutions around you and also uh, now I know uh, if I had if I had just managed a small percentage of what you are doing, I would have had a very complete different situation. Two way, I would have lost mercy because of my ignorance, mm. or I would have managed my pregnancy so well without having any changes. Because by because I didn't ask and I thought I was unique to just me, mm. uh, I lost quite. I almost got into depression. I almost uh, lost important relationships that I shouldn't have lost. That I should not lose. Uh, my landlord, uh, <laughs> people understand your situation. Talk to people, talk to people. Relationships are key, I mm. repeat. Mm. Also, for me, the after pregnancy, I, I think I'd get into more depression <laughs> than even during the pregnancy. The uh, it's PTA, mm. post, yeah, post whatever depression uh, that name, uh -huh. and so, uh. It was really bad. That's when, you know, I'd be crying in my room uh, for no reason, you know. And 
honestly i also didn't want people at that time so i did not know that there's that that's happening mm. to me and so it's important you know for you to hang around people who and listen to these shows like this you know where you get to hear uh, you know what happens to different people because it, mm. it, it could happen to anyone yeah yeah i think also psychologically set yourself up for growth learn learn move Move, move from what you know. Learn something different about pregnancy. Yeah. And uh, for those who have not been been blessed by to be a child, it isn't a uh, it isn't a, the lack of the child or the the timing that isn't right. Uh, learn what you can. When that time comes, because it will come. Uh, and even if it doesn't come, it doesn't make you less of a human. It's mm -hmm. it's um, it's the way we are, and we are, have to deal with our issues. Yeah. Uh, yes. Let's let's work together, everyone. Let's go. Thank you for all the friends that helped us uh, through the the, the, the sessions. The, um... Yeah, and thanks for this show. Mm -hmm. Really, really helpful. I wish there were more shows like this when I was um, when I was pregnant, mm -hmm. before I was pregnant. Yeah, really awesome show. So thank you. And that was our burn in the oven story.